What is good, y'all? It's GG Gang. It's your boy Smooth Guy Game back with another episode of the Indianapolis Coast Rebuild here today for you guys. And yes, we're getting into the season a little bit deeper here. We got week two, another division rivalry game set up with a breakout running back chance here for us. And that's obviously, you know, Jonathan Taylor had a great week one he wants to come in and improve off it a little bit more even though we got the loss last week take things a little bit more into his hand feed him the rock and today he's looking for either 200 yards or four touchdowns that'll take him i guess from superstar to superstar x factor so we want to do a little bit of scouting on the team that we'll be playing then as we're gonna to have to get him some carries and we got to hope that then this front seven is a little bit weak i don't like to see that you know for the top five players are all in the front uh front seven but they have will levis now as the starting qb uh, looks like he has finally taken over reins of the team completely 70 overall strong arm quarterback and so far i mean he looks like he has decent stats here i mean 83 deep 74 medium 80 short which i always thought was kind of weird like how are you good at throwing deep short and then just sucking the intermediates but i mean i guess it's just letting that arm slang being accurate up close and then kind of finding a tough middle ground but outside of that they got some great weapons to throw to too with topkins and burks and then a rookie and stewart at the new three spot don't forget about Barrios right behind him with his 92 speed that's going to be a problem to kind of deal with but it's always good to see starters come from the rookies so he should be making big plays i still got chingui okonu at tight end the offensive line is still looking good and then defensive line this is where we wanted to see them be weak at they still got jeffrey simmons there the defensive tackle appears that we wanted but the front seven as a whole is looking kind of runnable so we should at least be able to have some decent success there the dbs are all looking kind of weak too as well so i think honestly we could eat on the ground and through the air we're going into this game it looks like at least no new injuries other than the ones that we have already had coming out of week one as it looks like we will ro roll with a healthy lineup for ourselves the titans as well i think should be pretty healthy too we want to check out to see if they have any other injuries too but offensively and defensively, we are good as we have an upgrade here finally for Anthony Richards. His first upgrade of the season, and already I think I want to get them accuracy better. 77 deep, 78 medium. We've seen it be a problem so far this season, in the preseason and everything. So I want to upgrade his field general. Maybe improvise a little bit later to hopefully help him be better on his accuracy. So that when we jump into these games, like this beautiful one in the beautiful city of Tennessee, he can actually play a little bit better control the ball down the field we don't have to rely so much on the run because when it comes up to good teams the run can only take you so far as we've seen with baltimore and we ain't trying to be a baltimore 2.0 we want to let richardson slaying that pill if he can he does have a strong arm we just need to work on the accuracy deep so that way he can actually start connecting with some of these passes so if you guys are ready to get into this game man make sure you guys leave a like comment and subscribe as today we just have this week two action for you guys now some episodes i will try to lump in multiple games together other games will just kind of be one game at a time this one being a rivalry game and a breakout running back chance for one of our players definitely want to go ahead and highlight this game as much as possible so cooper's ready anthony's ready and i say we just go ahead and take things straight into kickoff And away we go. His opening kick here will be back. I think that's Breros. Their fourth receiver on the depth charts. He's going to take the one to the right. Finds a huge lane. He's going up the field. The 50, 30, 20. Nobody's going to be able to touch him. Coming up the screen late. If we had an extra 10 or 20 yards, maybe he would caught up. But that is Bryson Berrios taking the opening kickoff. And he takes it all the way back to the crib. Over 100 yards deep in his own end zone. Was able to just immediately give the Titans a 7 0 lead here as Richardson's already about to come on the field playing from behind. Defense has yet to even touch it. So, in a game where we kicked off first, offense is going to actually be the ones to see the field first. As he's coming off of a bad start his first time around, one touchdown, three picks in the losing effort to Houston. It's not a decent time to win that game, but here this time around, we're going to go ahead and lead things off. I mean, we have a breakout player chance with our running back, and he had a great first game, so why not let him do his thing a little bit here? But you already know we're going to still sling that rock. So first and 10 after the completed pass to our tight end there. We're going to go right back to Jonathan Taylor. Let him get a lot of the first down attempts here if we can. Because obviously we want to put him in positions to succeed. And I feel like running on first down will help out with that a lot. Nobody's kind of getting open here. Throw goes over the middle. Kind of lost sight of the defender there. I didn't even see him when I was commentating that. That is a great play. There. I think that is Kirby Joseph. Backup safety here for Tennessee as he was just in the right spot at the right time. 
rolling out to his right. He planted his feet. He thought he saw his receiver coming across, lost track of Joseph. And he was just there in perfect position. So now not only did they get the opening kickoff back, they also get a turnover here early in the drive to where Will Levis will now come on with the chance to be put up two scores, only one drive. You can see his stats on the season so far through his first game. He threw 217, two touchdowns, two picks. We'll look to hopefully maybe increase those interception numbers while decreasing those touchdown numbers. As no more Derrick Henry in the backfield is now uh, Tajay Spears. They did draft a couple of drafts back. It looks like he's taking full reins of the backfield here. As I go to him, two back-to-back -back times, not getting much luck there. Only a total of one net yard on both of those runs. And then we come right back with a sack, and the ball is loose. The force Buckner dives on it. That's Samson and Bukum getting back there for the strip sack. And then DeForest Butner falling on it late. Will Levis tried to roll out of the pocket, got loose with the ball. And when you get loose with that ball, you know it's going to end up in our hands as we go turnover for turnover. And now it's going to be our opportunity to get the offense back right here. We need to get the run game popping. Here goes some good blocks here this time. Jonathan Taylor off right side. Finally in the positives for his rushing attempts today. Three rushes, only one yard. But the one thing about the run game, you got to be patient with it. You got to keep trying it even when it doesn't look like it's going to work big. Great shoulder all that time all around. Bullying the defender out the way puts us in a third and short. And when you're third and short, you can go ahead and hand off yet again and feel a little bit more confident putting another shoulder into the same defender. 254 is not having a good day here today as we get a good triple option pass out here. Jonathan Taylor with a juke move onto the outside. Great way to make the DB look silly. As the triple option worked in our favor, that's all around to get us to second and one. We're going to come right back. Same formation here. Hand it right back to Jonathan Taylor up the middle. And that'll be a first down. Now here on first and ten, we see they kind of got the defenders bunched in. So we're going to go over the top here to Mo Ali Cox on the four verts. I was really looking triangle on that play. It looked like he might have been open. They went really tight, loaded up the box to keep Jonathan Taylor from doing this thing. As they try to do here as he gets pushed forward by his offensive line to get us close. And now second and goal coming to the end of the first quarter. Finds the back corner of the end zone. That is Granson. Kylan Granson, the third string tight end coming into the ball game and actually producing a big time play for us in the back corner of the end zone to tie it up. And we're actually going to stay with the offense as Tennessee gets completely shut down again on their next offensive drive. But they did pin us back pretty deep as here go the injury concerns already. Will Fries. Going down with a potential injury here. We'll have to see how long-term or serious that is. As we're going to go hand this one off to Evan Hall getting into the game. I guess when we go to that pistol formation, he's the running back that kind of comes in, not Zach Moss. So a good way to get some other running backs carries here. And that's going to be the only way that he would get it here is we throw this one out wide. And there goes that accuracy once again becoming a problem for us. It looks like torn labrum there so we're gonna have to go with a backup and offensive line already so that's two backup players that's already on our offensive line and still it's looking like we're running pretty good though taylor gets the first down run that time so we come right back with a pass here to michael pittman jr who will run for a first down just like him and that puts us up into the 28 yard line colt's offense is looking good methodical we're passing we're throwing we're running and we're getting first downs there as Michael Pittman Jr. taking down first and goal territory. And we're looking to take the lead here. Read option. Anthony Richardson to the outside. Great block by the receiver, Pierce. And he will jiggy his way on into the end zone. Just hit him with the one, two, one, two step. Into the end zone, baby. Anthony Richardson gives the Colts back the lead. A lead they probably should still have 14 nothing actually. As the only score that Tennessee has had so far, only good play that they've had, has been that opening kickoff return. And I guess you could say the interception. Only two good plays that we've seen out of Tennessee up to this point. But it'll take us here. Only a minute left in the first quarter. Still plenty of time, though, for them to answer some offense back. Because that's going to be a throw over the top to the running back. Will Levis. Not only showing the eye vision, but the arm accuracy and strength to get that one down the field. As he rolled out the pocket and was able to find his running back. Cross body. Now we have second and 10 here after the great coverage one-on-one -on -one for the incomplete pass. We're going to go eye formation, handoff to the right side. That's a big running lane as that Spears going up the field and gets them into plus territories. They're now on their own 34 or our 34 to end the first quarter here. Still down. We ran significantly more plays. 
But if they have too many more runs like that, this could be a long day for us as they go right back to the halfback yet again, stiff arming his way forward and being taken down by two post defenders. As it will be first and 10 at the 11 yard line. Tennessee is trying to put in some work here. Flag is put down. Throw will go out on a free play and it's getting complete. They're going to get illegal contact on Jalen Jackson, touching the defender past five yards, and that gives them a first and goal scenario here. Moving them forward a little bit, resetting the downs. Not what you want if you're this close, if you're Indianapolis. Second and goal. Play fake. Throw over the middle. He's got his receiver. That's Hopkins. And he stretches his arm just across the plane there, getting the touchdown to tie the ball game back up. And just like that, we'll have to see what this Colts team can do as the ball's on the ground. Picked up by Jonathan Taylor there. They tried the triple option yet again. This time didn't work as Richardson kind of threw it off the body of the defender. Should have tossed it out a little bit quicker there as Jonathan Taylor, though, takes care of the rushing attempts for us, getting the first down yet again. It looks like we did have an injury on Stroud. I think that was on the kickoff return there, so he's not coming back to the game again. So another big-time injury as Pittman Jr. catches the ball here on third to give us the first down and extend the drive. Onto our side of the field. Shotgun. Throw goes out. Josh Downs catching it. I know I wanted both of them boys to have 1,000 yards, so we're going to really need this pass offense to pick up if we want that. Here, we're going to toss this out to the ground, and it's on the floor. Picked up this time by Tennessee. They try the triple option again. And I don't know what that was, but Richardson just kind of flicked the ball onto the floor, and then Jonathan Taylor ran past it. I guess maybe miscommunication. Wasn't expecting the pitch there in that scenario, but... It is what it is, and now Tennessee's going to have a chance to take the lead right back. Colts do play pretty good defense here, though. Run defense has been A-OK -okay so far. Pass defense. Looking like it needs a little bit of work. Got to figure out if we're running zone, man, because both seemingly are working in the favor of Tennessee right now. We got second and 12. Only three receivers go out, and one of them ends up making the toe tap. Swag catch on the sideline to get him a first. Before being answered right back by another sack. That is Sam again. Second sack of the game. Looking very strong out there. So I love it. Already making big plays out there. And that's what we need to see more of. We need to get pressure. We're having a great job getting tackles for losses right now. I need to see more pressure getting that backfield. As they drop back for a third and six here. This is a clutch play. Wide open receiver over the middle. And Will Levis could not throw that ball accurately. The receiver just kind of froze up. Maybe he was paying attention to something else. Didn't think he would get the ball. But because of that, they're going to have to punt it back to us. And this is still plenty of time before half. Remember, Tennessee got the ball first, so we will get ball back. So if we can waste this time, score, and get ball back, we're looking really good for the second half. Going to start out in our own end zone territory, though, here. Going empty. So this could be dangerous if we don't get a pass off. But, of course, we do as Mo Alley Cox finds open room in the zone. Nice little deep dig. Gets us all the way up to the 24 on just one play here. Two-minute warning is up. Going to stay in the shotgun here. Looking. Downfield. Doesn't find anybody and gets sagged. Javion Clowney coming around from the outside and then getting a dual sack there from up the middle too as well. So they sandwich him in. We come right back to the shotgun. Trying to get it over the top of that linebacker of safety, but just could not get it to downs there. And then third and 16. Chance to get a first here. We got to get that out before this sack. And we're not able to make anything happen on that one, man. So we will end up putting it back to them. We're still putting time too as well. Only a minute 20 left. And now this would be ideal for them. If they can score any kind of way, at least they could potentially tie up the game. Of course, Barn, we score when we you know, get the open kick return because the offense for us has looked pathetic since our second scoring drive. We've been held down, but our defense is holding it down too as well as Vince Anthony. Once again, making a great play there and man coverage. That's why we went and signed him to be that nickel corner. So when we wanted to go, man, we could. Another great sack there takes them really far back. Third and 22. They'll just go ahead and hand this off and basically concede halftime there. As we only had 50 seconds left, it was not able to do anything with it either. We'll head into half. Tied 14 to 14. So the offense has been kind of calmed down. 37 offensive snaps compared to their 25. I feel like it's a pretty good split. Something we'll be watching out for to see if I need a lower quarter link. But a little halftime report here so we can go ahead and look and see what exactly is going on around the league. The Texans are playing Dallas at home and getting thrashed 28 to 7 at halftime. Oh my gosh, CJ Stroud, two interceptions already this game. Pierce has no stats at all. So I don't know if he's injured or they just haven't been able to run the ball at all. But I mean, being down that bad, I would see why. And then you have Carolina actually challenging the Chiefs. 
Tied 14 to 14. Mahomes, two passing touchdowns. Don't really see too many impressive stats for Carolina there showing up, but it is what it is. And then our good old faithful New Orleans playing against the Eagles, losing 14 to 10, though. Derek Carr playing booty like in real life. What else do I expect? And then Jalen Hurst, a touchdown and the interception. So hopefully that game can get wrapped up as they're in halftime too as well. Hopefully New Orleans can come out on top. You know, I'm still rooting for them. Be on the other bracket unless we got to play for them. And that's a ball on the ground. Oh, I was trying to set up a nice little commentary play. I thought Richardson was about to do something great. No, he's doing something terrible. Putting the ball on the floor. And there goes our meaningful, uh, what do you call it, advantage. Coming out of the half with the ball. And unfortunately, we put the ball on the ground and just give it right back to Tennessee. Almost like we didn't even get the ball first and gave them great field position. Now, thankfully, two negative plays in the first two drives here. Will Levis is still looking, throws it just barely out of a sack. I don't know how he was able to get that one loose. But because of it, we're going to make them just settle for three here. And they'll be up 14 to 17 here midway through the third. And we're going to jump ahead a little bit here as we're going to get to midfield. Third and two. So this is a clutch play for us. We've been dropping up to this point. But it is a clutch play where we need Richardson to make something happen. And that throw was just off the mark. We are really suffering from these accuracy issues from Richardson. Something he's going to have to work on during the regular season as we get a throw here that's honestly behind the receiver. Thank you to Michael Pittman Jr. for making a play on that one. But that honestly could have ended the drive right there. But it will keep it going. So now we have first and 10. Inching closer to the red zone. We got to go right back to our man Jonathan Taylor here. We haven't seen too much from him since early. But we do got to try to, I mean, there's still a whole second half to play. He can potentially get the four touchdowns. He can potentially still get 200 yards. We have a big plays like that one that pushes closer to the red zone. So why not go back to the feeding bear site? We got y'all with the play action and had a receiver open. And there goes the accuracy once again from Anthony Richards. So this time we're going to roll out. Somehow makes the throw here to Jonathan Taylor on the run this time. As Taylor will take this one down for a first down. You know, receiving yards will work too. It's passing or it's receiving and rushing. So if we're getting the ball in both fashions, it will help make it easier. That throw is going to be the downs. Fighting his way through three. Not one, not two, but three Tennessee Titans defenders. As he's able to work his way and then jug with the team. Jug with the team. Hey, jug with the team. Hey, as we take the lead. As we take the lead. 21-17, man. And Tennessee's going to have to do something here. As Levis has to lead his team back yet again. Down the field. Score. Which, honestly, is something that they have only been able to do a couple of times. Is That is a good one-on-one -on -one ball. And I think that was uh, Justin Blackman getting mossed there deep on that one. Is the run game for them has been pretty bad. But when they go to the air, it has been working. Is this going to be a receiver screen to Barrios as he gets taken down? Fourth and eight. Not able to make anything happen. And they will punt it back to us. Penn is pretty deep, though, here. As we're all the way back at the six. Richardson running in his own end zone. Throws this one on the run. And he's got his receiver. That's Alec Pierce up the field. I think that's his first target of the game, first catch. As he just rolled out to the right, and he just made something happen on that one. Here goes a read option here. Great block by the tight end down the field. I think that's Mo Ali Cox getting the DB. As it puts us in plus territory now, I guess you could say, at the 50-yard line exactly. One more play here before we go to the fourth, and it's Jonathan Taylor pushing us forward. Now, surely, onto their side of the field to start up the fourth. We enter this one. 21-17, still a pretty normal score. We've controlled a lot more plays, which is also pretty absurd. It's like how many more plays and yards we have compared to theirs. And they still are winning or close to winning at this point. This one's going to be a rollout for Richardson as he takes us right back to the 50 on the sack. And now we need a big play here to keep this drive going. We do not want to give Tennessee this ball back if we can help it. Roll out for Richardson. He's got two receivers running forward. You know, I call those two blockers. This is going to be a great run up the field and he gets out of bounds. At the 26-yard line, kind of tackled a little bit late there, but we won't call it. Using your receivers as blockers is something that you got to be able to do as a mobile quarterback, especially if they ain't going to get open themselves. And then after your legs get tired, you can hand off to your great power back behind you. As Taylor was able to get enough for that one, we drop right back on the run. Throw goes out. That's Michael Pittman Jr. dropping a touchdown. He had all green light that time around. He could have made something happen. Wasn't able to. So Richardson's going to take care of it himself straight up the middle. If you're not going to catch the rock when I lay out these dimes, then I'm going to take it myself. Anthony Richardson. Wise man once said, great quotes come from great individuals. As that was a great touchdown run there. Just right up the middle. They split open for him. The Red Sea parted. And he took it all the way there. They might as well not even touch them. Because they tackled him all. He had already crossed the plane. 
28-17 Indianapolis. Now it's up to Tennessee here as we start the fourth. Clutch drives are going to start ensuing here as they need to start scoring quick. This one's kicked back too. Braxton Berrios as he will take this thing. Wide open gap on the right again. And this time he goes untouched. Doesn't even have to juke, break a tackle, nothing. That was clear as wide open daylight. And oh my goodness, I don't think I've seen a clearer running lane than that. Braxton Berrios took that one. Honestly, probably could have jogged to the cribbo as now 14 of their points. Or I should say 13 because they're going for two right now. So it could be 15. 13 or 15 of their points have now come from special teams. This game should be a lot less, a lot lower than this. As they go out to the flats here to the tight end, he just cuts up real easy. Went man covers that time. The linebacker could not get out there quick enough to make a play. And just like that, 15 of their 25 runs have come on special teams. This game should really be 28 to 10 if we did our thing. Now we're trying to take one back on our own. That's KJ Hamler. Not doing much there on the return. We'll have to take things out with Jonathan Taylor, who's at 118 yards on the day. So 82 more to go for the goal. Kind of pretty late here to try to expect four more touchdowns here through the air or on the ground. As that's that great running lane up the middle. Just like that gets us up to the 50-yard line. He's got to sip on that tee as he's sipping on his way to getting closer and closer to taking away this lead. As we're going to roll out of the pocket this time. Clear rushing lane here for Anthony Richardson as he dives forward for the first. Great play by him, rolling out, using the legs. This time we're going to do the same thing. We're going to roll out, looking, finds his tight end wide open, and that's Woods staying in bounds too as well as he cuts up. That was a great cut up the field there, first and 10. Looking, throw goes out. That's Josh Downs going up the field for the first down and getting us in the goal territory. And why not here? First and goal, let our man Jonathan Taylor get one of them touchdowns that he needs to make this debut. First touchdown of the game, unfortunately, coming in the fourth. That might be the second. Uh, but Jonathan Taylor making things happen here and getting us back up two scores. That's the important part. 35 to 25 here, six minutes left in the game. And now they're looking to run two as well. This is a big time hole on the left side. Spears is going up the field. He's at the 40, the 30. We're giving chase and we're able to finally get him down, but not before a huge run. If we've kept this man negative all day, now they finally find some run, run blocking. Drop back, fires out quickly to Hopkins. Will Levis is starting to look like a dot master. They're going to go with the play fake here. He's looking, rolls, finds his tight end shallow, and he gets enough for the first down to take him into the red zone. Hand off again. Spears goes outside, uses his receiver not only to get one, but two blocks. I think that was Jalen Jackson, the rookie, giving chase there, but he ran right into his own teammate and fellow receiver blocker. And they used him as a pick and roll, basically, and got into the end zone, man. It is back to a three-score game, and we have to make something happen here. As Jonathan Taylor switches directions, originally going left, jukes his way back right. And now just going to take a couple more first downs. we got to extend this drive as much as possible. Rolling, throwing back shoulder, and he drops it. Jelani Woods will go down as he got popped and rocked on that one. But did drop the ball, stops the clock here. So we're going to go back to over lob of Michael Pittman Jr., for a great game there. That's about 15 or so yards. And on second and 10, if it worked once, why not go ahead and try it again here? We're going to go right back to him. Getting another first down target here for us on second and 10 and getting taken down in bounds so that Tennessee starts using their timeouts here. First and 10. Let's go right back to the air if we can, and maybe that was a mistake. Clock will stop because of the incomplete pass, so we're going back to Michael Pittman Jr., Mr. Overliable. Gets his third and inches, and it all comes down to this first down here. If we can get it, we're good. Hand off Taylor. He's going to take it up the middle, get a great block from Pierce, and get into the end zone. Not only does he settle things himself, gets us the first down where we could have just ran it out, but he also goes and gets another touchdown here. That's touchdown number two on the day here late in the fourth. As he extends it back to a 10-point lead, there's less than two minutes left. I got to say that's the dagger. We're feeling good unless Breras says the unthinkable takes a third one back and Ooh, I saw that right lane start to open up and I got nervous. First and 10. Levis will drop back in the shotgun. Fires it out to his wide open. Running back up the field. And he gets him into plus territory now. They're on our side of the field on one play. The wheel route from the running back was left wide open on the corner. Levis delivered a beautiful dot. And then he'll go right back to his running back yet again, getting out of bounds. Preserving that last timeout that they do have because they're going to need it if they're able to score. To possibly get a field goal here. That's wide open. Seam right up the middle. 
Pierre Collins closing ground quickly on that one. Good job by the rookie, but somebody should have been there to cover that. As now we have almost less than a minute left to go here. Throw goes out to his running back yet again, and he gets suplexed, tackled into the dirt. And they're going to go no huddle. They're trying to hurry up as fast as possible. They're trying to get into this end zone. 45 seconds left on the clock. Levis delivers a dot to the dirt. At least it stops the clock, though, for him. So third and six from their own 11. Levis, back corner of the end zone. Burrows, Braxton, Burrows does it again. Not only two times on special teams, but he catches one, too, as well. That's three total touchdowns for my dude today. And if you had him on fantasy... You certainly cashed out today. I don't think anybody would have had the fourth receiver on their team starting. But boy, it would have been a time to have that one go through. As now they're going to try the onside kick here. Down three. It goes to my man's Josh Downs as he picks this one up for us. And with only 30 seconds left, they only have one timeout. That's basically going to be ball game there, man. We go to kneel things out, eat at the last timeout, and your Colts are walking away with their first Victory on the season and take down the division rival in the Tennessee Titans, man. That'll probably go a long way to deciding up the division. You need those division wins. At least get those ties. Don't get swept. And we put ourselves in a position to at least do that when we meet them for the second time because I know they're going to come back stinging and hurting. Losing by only three points this late. And that was a crazy fourth quarter that saw the scoring really explode there. You can see that by the graph, it really went up there. 42 to 39 is your final as there was a total of 43 points scored in the fourth quarter. That's more than either team scored by themselves. 43 total points between the two teams. We had over 500 yards of offense, 300 on the air, 272 on the ground, 700 total. They had 500 total with 300 being on kick return. Completely shut them down on their third downs though, two for eight. That's what mattered the most. Our third down defense was great and our red zone percentage was fantastic. Six for six and all of them touchdowns too as well. That's what we like to see. 31 minutes on time of possession. I love that too as well. As Anthony Richardson, 22 for 35, 318 yards and two touchdowns. I love it. Will Levis, 15 for 21, 204, two touchdowns for himself. So no picks today. Jonathan Taylor, 171 and two touchdowns. So didn't quite do enough uh, to at least get it just on the ground himself. We'll have to see what his passing numbers were too as well. So he got close. He just need 29 more receiving yards and he'll be there. As Richardson rushed for 84 himself with two touchdowns as well. Spears got him a rushing touchdown. Michael Pittman Jr., 8 for 119. Mr. Overliable putting in that work. Um, Molly Cox was 78. Downs caught a touchdown pass as well. And I see Taylor only had 20. Wow. He fell nine yards short <coughs> of achieving the goal. Maybe they'll still give it to him. Nine yards short. I feel like that's so close, bro. 200 total yards is crazy to have in a game. I feel like you should give that one if it's close. But great game all around. Defensively, we put things to work. DeForest Butner, five TFLs today, two sacks for Samson. And I had to go check out my man's kick return numbers here at the end of the game, too, as well. It looks like Braxton finished with seven returns, 309 yards, two touchdowns. The longest one being 102 yards. That is 100% crazy. And yeah, it looks like they're not going to go ahead and give it to him. He's starting for a historic performance. I mean, he still got 191 yards all purpose. In my book, he's a superstar X Factor just in the game's book. He won't be. <laughs> Three. Uh, let me know down below, though, if you guys feel like that was close enough to where I should bump it up. I'll let you guys have some say-so on the series, too, as well. So comment down below. Do you guys think he did enough to earn Superstar X Factor? If so, we'll go ahead and make it happen as a personal switch from you guys. But we get three more injuries this coming out of last week's game. So I might mess with that injury slider too as well. I think I have it pretty high. I think I have it like 20 or something like that. I've seen some people play as low as 11 or 10. So I might have to drop it down that much because of course we want injuries to play an impact. But y'all saw we have, we've have we been having like five to six injuries a game. And there's not, and that's consistent. It's like there, there might be a one-off game where that happens, but it's not every game. So I might turn that down a little bit. Now here, of course, coming into the week, we declined that trade, which I thought I, did, I thought it would just go away last week, but I have to actually decline it. We're going to go ahead and set up our scouting focuses here too as well. Put the West and Central, Northeast and Southeast scouts on their exact positions that I want them to look at. So here in the West, we're going to go ahead and look at outside linebackers, preferably on the right side on Central. Uh, I got them kind of looking since he's also outside linebacker, but interior lineman, we're going to put him on the interior lineman in the Central. As far as the Northeast, since he's got defensive tackle and inferior interior offensive lineman, we're going to have him look at the DTs in the Northeast. And then in the Southeast, we're going to go ahead and have him, of course, look at the tight ends that we so desperately need. And hopefully there's a good one or two out there that we might be able to take a pick on, man, because I would definitely want us to do that. And the first mock draft is also out, too, as well. So we can kind of look and see right now they got us projected to go seven and take a left tackle on Clayton uh, Bryan. 
There's a quarterback taken here by the Bears at number six. Jace Wilcox, first quarterback kind of coming off the board there. Um, I guess they're going to be done with Justin Fields. I guess that's why they made that prediction. Another quarterback, Max Wallen, going to our rivals here at 11 with the Tennessee Titans. You know, they got a quarterback of the future tag placed on Will Levis. Uh, quarterback going to the Rams at 21. Uh, quarterback going into the Seahawks at 23. So that's four quarterbacks in the first round. And that'll kind of basically be how it wraps up. We'll have to see if that actually ends up working out. But we do want to check out our what our division rivals are going to do. And it looks like they got defensive tackle on left end going to the Jags and Texans. And they got them projected pretty high, 27 and 28. And they actually have the Titans. They have the Titans projected back behind up. They have us projected as the worst team in the division. I just realized that. Despite just beating Tennessee and actually being third and Tennessee being 0-2, they have Tennessee right now picking behind us. I don't know if that's due to a trade or what, but I definitely don't believe that's going to be the case when this season ends. So next time out, y'all, we will be getting through weeks three and four in one episode. I told you guys we would kind of bunch up some things, too. We don't have any kind of big new storylines for week three. So we'll go ahead and put three with episode four. So it'll be more of like a highlight style. You won't see every exact play kind of like how we did today. I only chopped out a couple plays here and there. So we've seen a little bit less of the games, but a lot more of the bigger moments and a lot more action packed there because we do have another division rival game game. The first time we played the Jacksonville Jaguars and they're 2-0 this season. So we'll definitely want to check that out and see what kind of talent we can walk away with and test ourselves against the division's best. So I'll leave you guys in the next episode. It's me, your boy, Coach Cooper. And I hope you guys are enjoying the series, man. Leave a like, comment, subscribe on your way out. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Later.